Welcome to the Solstice Online Game Engine Demo. Solstice is a text-based engine that allows multiple players to share a role-playing game environment. This video is considered part one of a series to show off some of the features of this engine and related tools. The Solstice client runs as a Java applet in your web browser, so Java is required. However, you never have to download updates for the game and you always have the latest version. In this video, I will be focusing on basic functionality of the engine. You'll see things like how to move around the world, pick up objects, talk with computer-controlled characters, purchase items from merchants, and get and complete quests. Future videos will cover more advanced features such as multiplayer interaction and how to build a world in Solstice using the tools. I realize that the text may be hard to read, but at least you'll get an idea of how this thing works. First, I will create a new account. Since account can have multiple characters, players don't see this name in game, so it can be anything you want. I type new and type in a name. Once this account is created, I'll see that I don't have any characters yet. I type new again and create my character. This realm I'm playing on allows for race customization of my character. I can be a human, dwarf, or an elf, each having minor stat modifications. I'll just choose one and enter a character name. Okay, I'm in the world now. This big gray box is the text output area where all of the game text will scroll by as you interact with the world. You may notice that the background of the latest text received is always highlighted in a slightly brighter color than the background, and this makes it easy for you to see what's new. Just under that there's a chat window where we can see conversations with other players. We'll demo that later in other videos, but it has three channels right now to organize your messages. There's a private channel, group messages channel, and a world messages channel. If I'm not going to want to chat at all, I can shrink down this chat window by clicking on its title bar. This makes my game text screen larger. Conversely, if I only want to chat, I can do the same with my main text window by clicking its title bar. That will shrink, making my chat window larger. To the right, I have my basic character statistics. More can be seen by looking at the character sheet, which I'll show later. Next to that, I have my inventory listing. These are all of the things I am carrying at the moment. I don't have much because I just entered this world. I do have a rusty dagger, though, that might be useful. We'll get back to that in a bit. Here is a mini-map. It shows cells around me. Worlds and solstice are broken up into cells. Here, you can see I can move north, northeast, or east. The world isn't necessarily flat, though. There are times when you can move up or down to get to an entirely new level of the world. We also have a mega map, which can be activated from the action buttons below. This map provides a larger overview of the world cells around you, and we can zoom in and out as well. Below that, we have an action timer window, which shows me any timed effects I have on me, such as potions, poisons, spells, etc. The box under that is called Users Here. This shows you anyone currently in the cell you are in in terms of real players. This also shows you people in your group if you have one. Later videos will touch on multiplayer interaction. To the left of this, I have a selected object window. This will show any details of the object I have selected. Below all this, I have my action buttons. These allow me to interact with the world without having to type commands. This is a text-based engine, however, after logging in, you might not have to touch your keyboard again, as you will see. And below that is my skill bar. I only have one skill now called melee, because I just started this character. Oh, and at the very, very bottom, there is a command line where you can see what you are typing in. Okay, now that we have the interface introduction done, let's see if we can touch upon some gameplay. Alright, so let's move north. I could type forward slash n and hit enter, and then I would move north. But I did promise you that you wouldn't really need your keyboard for much. So let's click on the mini-map instead. I'll click on the cell to the north of me. Okay, so I moved north. Notice again how the latest text is always highlighted so you don't have to search to see what's new. These objects in yellow are computer controlled characters. Clicking objects in Solstice defaults to the examine command. I'll click on the barkeep. You can see that not only was she examined, but she has become my selected object. 
Since she is a barkeep, I know she probably has some stuff for sale, mainly food and beverages. If I click talk, I will see what she has to offer. Hmm, she has some beer that will increase my charisma slightly for five minutes. Nothing like a cold brew to loosen up. I'll buy one of those. I select it from her list. It becomes one of my selected items, and I click the buy button. Watch it pop into my inventory. These stack, too. I'll buy a couple. Notice how I have a 2 next to the beer in my inventory, designating how many I have. Alright, I'm going to head south and go grab a demo quest. I interact with a quest giver the same way I interact with a merchant. I select them and click talk. Available quests will be listed. There are actually two listed here. This one called I Mean to Find a Spleen sounds interesting. I'll click that one. Clicking on the quest will show the description of the quest. It should list everything you need to find and tell you what the rewards will be and also give you a yes or no option as to whether you want to accept the quest or not. This quest is telling me I need to find one bear spleen and come back and return it to this guy. So I'll go do that. I also have this quest log button where I can see what quests I am working on. I can click on the quest and it will tell me my progress in that quest and whether I have finished it yet. Alright, now to go out into the world I'm going to need a weapon of some sort. Let's open my character sheet and see what I have equipped. According to my character sheet, all of my equipment slots are empty. They have none written there. I'll select my rusty dagger and click the equip button. If we watch the inventory, we'll see the dagger jump out of it once we click the equip button. If we look at our character sheet again, we'll see that the dagger is equipped in our main hand slot. Let's look at the mega map again. You can see that it is color coded. These colors designate certain areas, such as blue designates low danger areas such as towns, gray is graveyards, yellow designates roads, and red is hostile territory. You aren't guaranteed to be safe anywhere, but the red area is the least. I can even move with the mega map open. I'll move to a hostile area. Since I made this world, I know where to find what I want. Enemies appear red. Clicking on the enemy will show me more info about it, but don't hang around too long because enemies will attack you. Since I'm only level 0, I only have one skill, so the choices aren't difficult. I'll just kill this bear quick. After an enemy dies, you will automatically loot it. Each item that drops, it will ask you if you want to take it individually. Okay, I got what I needed. I can go back and turn in the quest for some experience points and some money. Even though there's so much more I can talk about, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I'll be making more and hopefully shorter videos, touching on a lot of the more advanced features the engine currently has. I do hope you think this project is a little bit cool. If so, please let me know and I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to go to the website for more information or to get involved in the project, www.solsticeonline.net. Thanks a lot for your time.